Hallelujah, Hallelujah. We certainly do tonight rejoice in Almighty Yahweh. In Yahshua Hamashiach. Not for some things, not for what we deem as being the best things, but for all things, Israel. He commands us as a house and as a nation to give toda unto him in all things. Why? Because he is in control, Israel. There's nothing that happens that he is not aware of. There's nothing that goes on that he does not suffer, Israel. Even as we cry out, Unto him, out of a pure lamb, broken and contrite before him. Don't think he does not know or he does not hear you, Israel, because he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he answers us and he is quick to answer us through his Torah, his mitzvah, through Yahshua HaMashiach. That's how he answers us, Israel. That's how we are comforted. It's through his Dabar. Hallelujah. We do, Barak, all you all that have joined us tonight yes. here at Kudvei Mit, Midweek Truth. We Barak you all that are listening by via of live stream or whether you're listening by our radio station here in Jefferson, South Carolina. Yeah. We do, Barak you all. I do want to start tonight somewhat a limb or a branch out of the message that I begun on Shabbat before last. Concerning the need of an offering, Israel, being one that finds a, a defense in what Yah has to say unto his people, one that by Torah, as it instructs us how to bring an offering before Almighty Yahweh and the forgiveness of Almighty Yahweh. Does he forgive us seven times or the 70 times seven? Does he put a number on that, Yisrael? Hallelujah. Is there a limit to his mercy and to his ahava? Hallelujah. First of all, I want to begin here. In Bereshit, Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, verse 6. If we listen and if we take, took heed to the last message that was preached here by Reat Dawid, he alluded to this. Concerning Eve and Adam, as they transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. But yeah, I want to express one thing that, in one spirit, that we all, Yisrael, we must watch out for, that we must defend against. We cannot allow our nephish, our mind, to be consumed by what the world has to offer. What we believe our flesh desires, but it should be by what Yahweh desires, what Yahweh offers, what he commands us, Yisrael. That should be the fruit that is most desired above all things. But it says here in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was pleasant for food, for nourishment, and that it was desirable to the eyes. Are not things most desirable to the eyes? You may see a piece of fruit or a dish that is set out, and it may look desirable to the eyes, but not all times is it well or is it nice, or is it to your palate, Yisrael. But she took of the fruit thereof and did eat it, and she gave it also unto, into, unto her husband, and he did eat. So they partook of the fruit which Yahweh said not to Israel. Yeah. And not only did the woman fall, but she gave unto her ish, and he also partook. And it says, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. How did this knowledge come to them? How did they know? Who told them? Was it by the inspiration? Was it by the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh? It was not. And it says here that they clothed themselves. They, with, they sewed fig trees or leaves together and made to themselves garments or aprons. And that's what we do so many times, Yisrael, because we transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh or we sin. We find a way to make unto ourselves 
a garment of covering that we can somewhat hide from the presence, that we can hide from the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, or because our sins are our nakedness, our transgressions have been exposed, we believe we can hide them. Our nakedness, we believe in our own strength and what we put together and instruments that we assemble that we can hide from Almighty Yahweh and he will not see what things we have committed. But we have fooled ourselves so many times, have we not, Yisrael Yah? Yahweh, he sees through the veneer. He sees through the garment. We try to put on a garment that is appeasing unto the eye of man. But yet, in the eyes of Almighty Yahweh, it is most abominable. So it says here as we continue in verse 8. So they heard the voice of Almighty Yahweh, his breath, his, his ruach, his presence, Almighty Yahweh in the garden, in the ruach or in the mist or the, the brightness of that day. And Adam and his wife, they did this, and I want us to take heed to this, Yisrael, they hid themselves. Do we not recall that message? As they hid themselves, Yisrael, Yah, away from Yah, away from the judgment. They knew that they had partook of that which Yahweh commanded them not to. And we do this continuously, Yisrael, Yah, and we try to hide from Almighty Yahweh. So when the Ruach HaKodesh come in the presence, whether we are in the Bayad of Almighty Yahweh or amongst the congregation of Yisrael, Yah, instead of us coming clean and coming forward and confessing, we hide ourselves. We hide behind the veneer of flesh. We try to hypocritize, if that's a word, our facial features, our dress, our attitude amongst the congregation of Yahweh. But you know that the Ruach HaKodesh, it discerns us, Yisrael Yah. It finds us out. That we cannot hide in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. So they hid themselves from the presence of Almighty Yahweh among the trees of the garden. How many times do we hide ourselves, Israel? Yah? All the time. When we transgress and we do not bring that which Yahweh commands us to bring. The offering of confession. I felt our faults one unto another, Israel. Yah. That the effectual fervor, uh, prayer of the Sadiq may avail or may abound much, Yisrael Yah. Let me move on because there's, there's something I do want to get to even concerning Cain and Abel. Hallelujah. And Yahweh, he called unto Adam and said to him, where are you? It's not that he did not know where he was. That was to their demise. That they were not in the place where Yahweh intended them to be, tending, taking care of the garden, laboring, keeping their minds upon the Mishra and the Torah, the commandments, not allowing them to slip Israel. So he said, where are you? And he, said, and he said, I heard your voice in the midst of the garden, and I was afraid. He said, I was afraid. What was he afraid of? Was there any other times in the midst of the garden where Adam, in this expression, certainly he feared Yahweh, he honored Yahweh, but something transpired that turned. And he feared even the very judgment yes, sir. and the indignation of Almighty Yahweh. We must understand that there was knowledge pointed to Adam. He was not a dumb man. He partook of that by choice. Because he understood the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. And he did not want to be separated from that which Yahweh has made him one with. So he partook of it. Hallelujah. So he said, I was afraid. Because I was naked, I am exposed, I am open before you, what we have done. So I hid myself. Don't we find ourselves running and hiding Israel? You know, the Torah speaks as of a sinner or those that are rasha, criminals against Almighty Yahweh. It also uses the term of 
one that runs, or a criminal that runs. Israel. And I would get to that. I would explain that to us. Because we have transgressed the Torah so many times, Israel. And it cannot be a continual thing amongst the house of Israel. It must stop. Because Yah, he makes a difference between the Sadiq, those that are righteous, that walks according to the Mishvah and the Torah, and that which is called a sinner, or the sinner, Yisrael. So in this message tonight, above all, I want us to judge ourselves and check ourselves and see where we stand with Almighty Yahweh. So Yahweh, he expressed and said unto Adam, who told you? Did Yahweh tell him? No. It's because of the sin. It's because of the iniquity. He said, who told you that you were naked? You see what the flesh does? You see what the mind of Rashad, being a criminal against Almighty Yahweh, running, trying to get away, trying to flee and hide from his presence. He said, who told you, told you you was naked? He said, have you eaten of the tree thereof, which I commanded you that you should not eat? Are we still partaking of that tree, Israel? The tree of the flesh. We believe that if we abide in the flesh, we do the things that are fleshly, that we're going to inherit the eternal life. It is not so, Israel. What we, what we give or add to the flesh, it only brings death, Israel. It shortens our life in this realm, and it brings us death, separation from Almighty Yahweh. So he said in verse 12, And Adam said, The woman who you have gave me, you have made for me, he said, she gave of me the tree, and I did eat. And Yahweh said to the woman, is this so what you have done? And the woman said, that the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And Yahweh said to the serpent, and this is the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, and upon your belly you shall go, and the dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And it says in verse 15, that, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your Zerah and her Zerah, both seeds Israel. And it shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he also said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows in conception. Is it not true, Israel? See, because we transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, don't you know that we allow the seed of the enemy to be laid in the heart and in the mind, Israel? And then the conception of the birth of that yields forth even more sin, even more death, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. So he said, even in your conception, it will be multiplied sorrows unto you, and in sorrow you should bring forth children. And your desire should be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. And this is what he said unto Adam. And unto Adam, he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your Isha, your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I've commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. He said, curse is the ground for your sake. Was not the ground also cursed when Cain took the life of his brother Israel? Was not the grounds cursed also? It did not yield the power or the strength of that which Yahweh established from the beginning of the Olam. So he said, curse be the ground for your sake, and in sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles, and we see this, Yisrael, no matter what type of garden we plant, whether it's in the physical or whether we plant in the root ark. Yes. We find that the thistles and the thorns, they continuously yes. spring up. Yes. No matter how, how orchestrative and we work on the gardens continuously, as soon as you relax and you look back, there's another weed. Sure there's something that is sprouting up that should not be Israel. Not so he said, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread. Is that not true, Israel? Yeah. Don't we have to labor in this time to eat breath? 
Even in the, the midst by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we must labor that we may eat. Yes. That we will be preserved in these last times, Israel. Yeah. So he said, by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and for dust we shall return, Israel. Yeah. I want to move on to Bereshit chapter 4, beginning in verse 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have we not been sinners, Israel? Yeah. Yeah. Are we still not breaking or transgressing the Torah? Hallelujah. And we run. Let me read this. In Bereshit chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain, he talked with his brother. And it came to pass that when they was in the field, that Cain, he rose up against Abel, his brother, yes, he and he slew him. Now, this is after... The Zabat of the offering that was supposed to be given to Israel. Adam, he knew what had to take place year by year, time or times, whereby there had to be an offering given for the sin, for that which is committed. So Abel, he obeyed that which was instructed of Almighty Yah, and he brought forth the fatling of the flock before Almighty Yahweh. But we know that Cain, he brought forth the fruits of the field, which Yahweh was not pleased in Israel. And all Cain had to do was obey Yah and bring that which he had commanded from the beginning. And we still yet do this today, Israel. We bring forth the fruits of the flesh, and we think they are wonderful in the presence of Almighty Yahweh, but it's not what he has commanded us to bring before him, Israel. Yahweh, he's not going to receive any offering. He's not going to receive just any zabak. And what we bring to him, Yisrael, and it's not under the aspiracy or the auspice of the Torah, what he has commanded, that he will not receive it. He will reject it every time, Yisrael. So why do we continue to bring an offering before Almighty Yahweh that is not pleasing? And our praise, the work that we do, that what we apply our hands to, Yisrael, it should be barah, it should be blessed. If we do it by his name, if we walk according to his commandments, Yisrael, but we find other paths, we find other ways. The Torah says that we, if we try to find any way into the Melchut of Almighty Yahweh, that we're thieves and we're robbers. Hallelujah. So in Cain, so Yahweh, he said unto Cain, where is Abel your brother? And he says, I know not. Did he lie? Did he tell the truth? No, he did not, Yisrael. He said, am I my ark or my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? For the voice of your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. And this is one of the important points that I want us to uh, understand tonight, Yisrael. He says, now are you cursed from the earth, which has opened up her mouth to receive your brother's blood at your hand. How often do we share innocent blood, Israel? Yeah, because we do not walk according to the Torah and that which he's commanded. We see one that obeys Yah, that is committed, and we see the lacking even in our own lives. Instead of, instead of just confessing unto Almighty Yahweh and knowing what we need to pull up, we have a example in the midst of us. We seek to shed the innocent blood of one another, Israel. Yeah. And it should not be so amongst the house of Yisrael. Yisrael yeah. So he says this. He says, when you till the ground, it shall not henceforth bring unto you her strength. Was that not the same judgment that Almighty Yahweh given unto Adam in the beginning when he transgressed the Torah? But he says this, a fugitive. A fugitive. You should always run. You should not find a place of dwelling, a place of comfort, a place of certainty. But from my judgment and from the words of my mouth, you should always be scattered abroad and run. Yeah. Don't you know that is one of the attributes of even Satan? And we will look this up in the Torah and define this word as one that goes to and fro, yeah. in and out, no certain dwelling places. And when Satan presented himself before Almighty Yahweh concerning Eo, he said, y'all said, where have you been? He said, I've been to and fro. Have we abided in the place where Yahweh 
has commanded us to stay, Yisrael, in the Torah. Walking according to his statutes, his commandments, and his ordinance, Yisrael. We must do this at all times. We cannot let our guards down that the enemy will come in and have his way, Yisrael. We must stand upon the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. But yet, even when we fall short, we know that Yahshua HaMashiach, he is our offering. He is our Shabbat, Yisrael. Hallelujah. When we fall short, his very measure is that which brings us up, that we may be accepted before the throne of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. So we have no need to be condemned, Yisrael, but we cannot continue in these paths. It must stop. Hallelujah. It must stop. So he said, you will be a fugitive. You will run and a vagabond. You will have no certain dwelling place. Just as Adam and Eve, they hid from Almighty Yahweh. That's what one does when he is a fugitive. They run from the law. They run from the judgment. They run from the sentence. But yet we cannot, they cannot escape. Like they say, you may run, but you cannot hide. We cannot hide from the judgment of Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael. So he says, you shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. You shall be in the earth. And Cain, he said unto Almighty Yahweh, he says, my punishment, my judgment, this judgment for my iniquity is much greater than I can bear. Hallelujah. You know, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh his judgment, what he required for the sins which we have committed, Israel, is much greater than what we can bear. But because of Yahshua HaMashiach, our Zabak, Israel, we cannot forget what he has done for us. There was no repentance in Cain. He did not one time repent what he has done. But yet Yahweh, he has opened a door that we may come before him and confess our faults. That we may get, if I may use this term, the slate clean, Israel. Yeah. There must be an offering. There must be a confession, Israel, yeah, that our sins may be washed and cleansed away. But even in that, the ultimate offering is in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Without him, there will be no way that we shall be received into yeah. the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. If you would me, turn with me to Lucas chapter 5, verse 12. Somewhat recapping on what was taught the last time concerning this Yisrael. We do recall, or if you recall, as, um, as uh, Yahshua and Kepha entered into that town, that certain place where the taxes were due unto those that were not of that town. You recall the fish. You recall the coin that was in the fish's mouth? That was enough for both of them. Also, concerning the ships at the sea, when Yahshua HaMashiach commanded those to sell out a little farther, and they received of the abundance, just obeying what Yahshua HaMashiach prescribed. I, I want to begin here in Lucas chapter 5, verse 12. Concerning... Hallelujah. Even this very thing, Israel, that there must be an offering. There must be a testimony that we must have, Israel, to offer unto Almighty Yah. This is concerning the man that was leprous. Lucas chapter 5, verse 12. And it came to pass, when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Who seeing Yahshua HaMashiach, he fell upon his face and besought him, saying, Yahshua, if you will, if it be your tough pleasure, you can make me clean. That shows right off, Yisrael, that he had the amuna to believe that Yahshua HaMashiach, he had the power, he had the power to make him clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, it is my tough pleasure, I will. He says, be you clean. 
And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Now, he did not say your sins be forgiven. But he says, be you clean, Israel. Be you clean. That is the first order of business. Is that we must walk upright before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. And we must be clean, Israel. And it says, and immediately the leprosy it departed from him. And he commanded him to tell no man, but go and show yourself unto the Kohen and offer for your cleansing according to as Moshe has commanded for a testimony unto them. Do you recall me explaining to that effect, Yisrael? He had to bring for a sin offering, that which was acceptable according to what Moshe had commanded. And he had to bring that before the Kohen. That it may be a, a, a sign, that it may be a token, that he has been cleansed from his leprosy, Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yahshua HaMashiach, he is our token. Right. He has been given unto us, Israel. Yeah. And he commanded him to tell no man, but go to yourself into the Kohen and offer for your cleansing according to that that Moshe has commanded for a testimony to him. But so much the more went for the fame of Yahshua HaMashiach. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be, held, and to be healed by him of their infirmities, of their sicknesses. Of those things that uh, corrupt Yisrael. We must come to Yahshua HaMashiach for everything, Yisrael. For the cleansing, to be purged of the corruption. It's only going to be by the Torah, by Yahshua HaMashiach. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and he prayed. And it came to pass on, a cer on certain days as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the Torah sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Yehuda and Jerusalem. And the power of Yahweh was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed, which was taken, or a man that was taken of a palsy, and they sought by means to bring him in and to lay this man before Yahshua HaMashiach, that he may be cured of his palsy, Yisrael. But because of the crowds, because of the multitude, they were not able to reach Yahshua HaMashiach. Doesn't it seem like that sometimes, Yisrael? Yes, yes. That it's hard to get a pala, a prayer, through unto Almighty Yahweh. Seemingly, though, that they're not being heard. But yet, Yisrael, we must do what it takes to continue to press, even to enter into the very presence of Almighty Yahweh. So what did they do here, Yisrael? And when they could not find a way in, that they could bring him in because of the multitude, they went unto the top of the house and let him down through the toweling in his couch into the midst of Yahshua HaMashiach. They was willing to go through great lengths because they knew that the healing that the forgiveness, that the cleansing only could come through Yahshua HaMashiach, and there would be no other way. So they took drastic measures, Yisrael. Do we take drastic measures? Do we do what it takes, Yisrael? Do we may enter into the presence of Almighty Yahweh? Or have we become lazy as a people? Our Pilar, our prayer. We don't want to pray. We don't want to take the time to pray, Yisrael. Hallelujah. What happened to the pressing? The old condition, they seem to have a press like no other. But yet in this generation, we find ourselves becoming lackadaisy and lazy, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We must press. Why? Because Yahshua HaMashiach, he has just what we need. Hallelujah. So we must press into his presence, Yisrael. Every day, every time. While we, whether we're working in the midst of the Gohin on the nations or even amongst the Kedusha, Yisrael, yes. 
We must continuously press to keep our minds stayed on him. Hallelujah. And they said they let him down through the talent of the housetop before Yahshua HaMashiach, verse 20. And when he saw the imuna, their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven of you. Hallelujah. Isn't it just worth the press, Israel, y'all? To enter into the presence, the tabernacle of Almighty Yahweh, the place in which his name is written, Israel, y'all. Just that we may receive of Yahshua HaMashiach a touch from him. As the old condition would say, just a touch from the Shemayim. Just to be in his presence again, Yisrael Yah. And it says here in verse 21, that the scribes and the Pharisees, they began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaks these blasphemies? Because they didn't believe that anyone could forgive sins. Only, only one could, could forgive sins, and that's Almighty Yahweh. He says, who can forgive sins but Yahweh alone in verse 21? They asked this question. See, even from the beginning of this, they resisted Yahshua HaMashiach every step of the way. Hallelujah. Do we find ourselves resisting Israel? As Yahweh reveals Yahshua HaMashiach unto us, we find ourselves resisting. Again, a fugitive, resisting. Running for Almighty Yahweh. But it says in verse 22, But when Yahshua HaMashiach, he perceived their thoughts, he knew their thoughts, he answered them saying, What reason you in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Your sins be forgiven you, or say, Rise up and walk. He said, But that you may know that the Son of Man has power upon the Olam, the earth, to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up your bed, your couch, and go unto your house. He said, which is easier to say? To be forgiven of your sins or take up your bed and walk, Israel? Mm -hmm. So it says in verse 25, and immediately he arose up before them and took up that which wherein he lay, and he departed to his own house, honoring and praising Almighty Yahweh. Do we find ourselves honoring and praising Almighty Yahweh, Yisrael Yah? Don't you know he touches us when we enter into his presence? No matter what ails us, the doubt of our hearts, of our minds, Yisrael Yah, it all should go away when we're in the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. Heartache and pain, it all goes away, Yisrael Yah. When we allow the Ruach, when we allow the Torah of Almighty Yahweh to touch us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We should not resist. We should not run, Yisrael. But we should receive what Yahweh has for us, the bread of life. Verse 26. And they all were amazed, and they honored and praised Almighty Yahweh, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things this day. Moving on to verse 27, because I want to get into where I left off concerning the publican. They were despised amongst the people. Why? Because they were tax gatherers. They were borrow, I mean, they would lend, and then seek more in return. Yes, sure they did. For which that was lended out to Israel. So they were despised among the people. They, was, they, they were dishonored. They, the people had no regard, Israel. So it says in verse 27, that after these things, he went forth and he saw a publican, a tax gatherer, yes. named Levi, sitting at the receipt of custom. This is the, one of the main offices. We have them today, the main offices which taxes are gathered and collected, the feds or what have you, Israel. And he said unto him to follow me. And he left all and rose up and followed Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, yes, yes. Don't you know, Yisrael, that we are just as the publican? Yes, sir, that we gather things, Yisrael, that are not pleasing in the eyes or in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Yes, 
and we covet them. We partake of them, Israel. But he told this publican to follow me, and he left, and he rose up, and he followed Yahshua HaMashiach. And Levi, he made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat with him. But look in verse 30. But there also were scribes and Pharisees, and they murmured against the disciples, Yahshua HaMashiach, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and with sinners? He said, Why, Yahshua HaMashiach, do you gather with publicans and sinners? You bring yourself to the heathen. See, they did not know even what Yahshua HaMashiach was doing at that time. All they was there for was to, was for their own righteousness. That they may seem that they are the greatest amongst the people. But that, that is not what Yahshua HaMashiach came there for. He came for that one that was not walking according to the, to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. The sinner. The publican. Don't we need Yahshua HaMashiach? Israel? You know, I find myself. In the shoes of this public in Israel. Yes, I know that's you. Why? Because we fall short. We, we find ourselves walking out of the path or out of the way, Israel, that Yahweh has commanded us. We know that Yahshua HaMashiach, he even said this, and I will get to that, that I did not come for those that were Sadiq, that were righteous, yeah. that had no need of the Torah. See, the scribes and the Pharisees, they had no need of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. But yet, for some reason, they could not leave him alone. They watched every move that he made, every step. They watched him very closely, Israel. Are we watching, Israel? Do we see what Yahweh has done for us even this very night? That he sent his Torah to us that we may be healed, that we may be delivered of the transgression, Israel, even of our very heart. We can be as the scribes and Pharisees. It says we have, no, we have no need of rebuke or reproof. We have no need of this message tonight. Yes, I need it, yes. This is not me, Zakane, Yorami. I, I am above. We are not above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Hallelujah. So they murmur against Yahshua HaMashiach. They said, why do you eat and drink among the publicans and the sinners? I brought Almighty Yahweh for Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. That he has dwelt in the midst or in the congregation of the house of Almighty Yahweh tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. And Yahshua answered them and says, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. He said, I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners unto yes. repentance. Hallelujah. We need repentance, Israel. Yeah. We need to confess and bring our offering before Almighty Yahweh. We must bring the meal offering. Because why? Because we don't have what it takes that we may be acceptable in his presence. But we do have Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Hallelujah. We do have the offering that he provided, Israel, for us. That's why everywhere we go, we must take Yahshua HaMashiach with us. We must take the Torah with us. We must have his mitzvah written and inscribed in our levim, in our hearts and in our minds, Yisrael. Yeah. I want to skip down to verse 36 of the same chapter. Hallelujah. No, let's skip down. I want to go to chapter 7, verse 37. Hallelujah, way. Hallelujah. So does Yahweh, did he still require an offering, Israel, yeah. that is acceptable in his presence? Hallelujah. But yet he takes the time that these things may be understood, Israel, yeah, that we may do so. And it's not hard. It's not a difficult thing. All he asks is for us to obey his Torah, to trust him in all things, and to believe on that which he has, has yes. sent no in Yahshua Hamashiach. It says in Lucas chapter 7, verse 36. 
another account, Israel, concerning the Pharisees. And one which was a woman, hallelujah, a sinner. It says here that, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. One which transgressed the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. This is an example of us all, Israel. We have fallen short. We have done every conceivable thing. How we should be accepted in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. See, this woman, she brought something that even the Pharisees did not bring. All those that came to that banquet did not even offer or have the mind to offer what this woman offered Israel. Yes, yes. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Yahshua HaMashiach sat and meet at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. Have we not heard of this, even this various account, Israel, many a time? And stood at his feet, behind him weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Don't you see what offering she has brought, Israel? It was worth more than all the monies or the righteousness of those of the Pharisees that sat in the meet of that, of that, uh, that meeting, Israel. Yes. What have we brought before Almighty Yahweh? Have we brought our pride? Maybe our arrogance. We have brought it before him, Israel. Yes. We've almost lost that coming before him with the tears and with the crying, Israel. Yes. We must understand our state without Yahshua HaMashiach. And that alone should bring tears. That alone should bring the sorrowful, uh, sorrowfulness of love and brokenness and contriteness in his presence, Yisrael Yah. This woman come broke, crying before the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. Now when the Pharisees, which had been in him, saw it, he spoke within himself, saying, This man... If he were a prophet, questioning the, the power of Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. he would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. Well, his problem was he just didn't know Yahshua HaMashiach knew. If only he came to that banquet alone for just that one woman. Don't you know Yahshua HaMashiach, he came to this world, Yisrael Yah, just for Yisrael, yeah. Yeah. even though the world teaches that he come to save every sinner, it is not so. He came to bring back, to receive back unto Almighty Yahweh that which has been taken or missing from the Melchut, the kingdom of Yisrael. Yeah. And he has an election. He has a very elect Yisrael. Yeah. And he found even in the midst of the congregation of these men that thought that they understood and knew more even than Yahshua HaMashiach, this woman, broken and contrite. In her own mind, she had no wealth, but yet she was of the zero of the sea. He was, she was which Yahweh sent Yahshua HaMashiach to receive or to retrieve. Why? Because she had Imuna to believe. And not only that, she brought an offering that was acceptable before Yahshua HaMashiach, weeping, crying, before the presence, before the feet of Yahshua HaMashiach. And in the midst of all these men, they did not bring a gift for Yahshua HaMashiach. They had nothing for him. Let me read on. And Yahshua HaMashiach, knowing his thoughts, he answered unto him. He says, Simon, he said, I have somewhat to say unto you. And he saith, Master, say on. He said, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. And one owed 500 pence, and the other owed 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them 
will love him most. Do we think tonight, Israel, y'all, that we have been forgiven a very little? That what we have done has not been a, a great sin before Almighty Yahweh? We believe our, our sins, we could cover them. We believe we can hide them with our own garments, which we have made, Yisrael. But we cannot hide them, Yisrael. Yeah. Yahweh, he knows our hearts. He knows the intent of every one of us in here, Yisrael. It says when he had nothing to pray, he frankly forgave them both. Hallelujah. He said, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, you have judged righteously. I have been forgiven much, Israel. Yeah. Above all men, I have sinned before the presence of Almighty Yah. And above all men, I need the mercies of Yahshua HaMashiach. I need them, Israel. And he said unto him, you have rightly judged. And he turned unto the woman and said, Simon, see you this woman. He said, I entered into your house and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears. When was the last time we had washed the feet of Yahshua with our tears, Israel? It's been a mighty long time. Before we come before his presence with crying. And with repentance, Yisrael, what offering have we brought tonight? Is it an offering that is acceptable before the presence of Almighty Yahweh for our trespasses and for our sins, Yisrael? She said, "You have what? She has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her very head. Did not have even a towel to even dry his feet. And you gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in." in has not ceased to kiss my feet. He said, my head with oil, you did not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I say unto you that her sins, that her iniquity, her transgressions, which are many. Our transgressions, have they been many, Israel? You cannot even count them. Seventy times seven. How many times have Almighty Yahweh, how many times have we been forgiven? Even for sins that we have not even knowledge of. Yes. Yahweh has forgiven us, Yisrael. How many times should we forgive our ark? Is there a limit, Yisrael? You know, Yahshua HaMashiach spoke that in order to shock. Because we believe that if we forgive one only a few times, that we have the right to say, no, I don't forgive you no more. Does you know that Yahshua HaMashiach, even out of the many times that we continue to transgress and have transgressed his Torah, yet he still awaits the right offering, Israel. Hallelujah. That which we should bring to his presence. Hallelujah. We still have to bring an offering before the presence of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. And what he does and what he has done for us is make us acceptable unto our Abba, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful, Yisrael? Yeah. That even as this woman, we have nothing to offer, we have nothing to bring. But yet, Yahshua HaMashiach, he came for us tonight. Hallelujah. Not for the world. It's not for all to receive this message tonight of simplicity. But only unto the sheep. Those of the chosen of Israel, of Almighty Yah. He said, for her sins, which are many, they are forgiven. For she, Ahava, she loved much. Yes. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. What is our Ahava to our Almighty Yahweh tonight? Do we love him? Do we esteem him very lightly? Then if we do, we do not understand what he has done through Yahshua HaMashiach. We have said much, Israel. Yah. Hallelujah. And he said unto her, your sins be forgiven. And they that sat at the meeting at meet with him began to say to themselves, who is this that forgives sins also? 
And he said to the woman, your imuna, your faith, has delivered you. Go in shalom. Hallelujah. Do we have the imuna, Yisrael? Do we believe in and on the works of Yahshua HaMashiach? He said, in that alone, because of him and through him, that we are forgiven, Yisrael. We are washed. We are cleansed. But we must continue in his way. We must continue in his light, Yisrael. We must continue in the path that he has elected us to walk in. Not according to our own ways and our own concepts, but according to that which he has in Torah. Hallelujah. I have a few more verses to read before I bring this to a close tonight, Yisrael. And still yet, there is much more to this. Hallelujah. It says this in 3rd Ezra, just a few verses here, in 3rd Ezra, and then in uh, what year are Leviticus. The, concerning the rashah, or the wicked, the sinner, those that run, we run, we try to hide ourselves. Just as John Valjean, if we recall the story, his whole life he ran continuously. He was a fugitive. Hallelujah. It says, let not the sinner say that he has not sinned. That's what it says here at 3rd Ezra, chapter 1653. For Yahweh shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which says before the presence of Almighty Yahweh of splendor, I have not sinned. Behold, Yahweh, he knows all the works of man, their imaginations and their thoughts, and their hearts. Don't you know he knows every thought, every imagination, every thought, Yisraya, of our hearts. Moving on quickly to Leviticus, Yira, chapter 5, verse 1. We must confess, Israel. We must offer that which is acceptable before the presence of Almighty Yahweh in Yahshua HaMashiach. We must continuously bring praises, Israel. We must open our mouths before Him. Hallelujah. It's very, it's such a simple thing, Israel. But because we continue to transgress and go out of the way, then it's a hard thing for us to do. It says, if a nephish or so, a nephish sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, whether he has seen it or known of it, and if he do not declare it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Have we not been those that have seen? We know our sins. There's things we have done that no one else knows we have done, but yet we tried to hide them from the presence of Almighty Yahweh. It says here that you should bear those things and know, those things we hide in secret, those things which has been sworn. We should not be, uh, or the judgment of Yahweh should not find its way short, Yisrael. Verse 2. Or if a nephis touch any unclean thing, and we have touched many unclean things, Israel. Yeah. The world, we have laid our hands on things that we should not lay our hands, our eyes on things which we should not lay our eyes upon, Israel. It said, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast, or a carcass of unclean cattle, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and we have touched so many unclean things, Israel. In our hearts and our minds. This is not, this is also in the physical. But we touch so many things because we watch what we do in the physical, but there's so many things that takes place even in our minds, Israel. Because we open our hearts up onto everything. We open our ears to everything, Israel. So he says, if you touch them, those things that are unclean beasts, or the carcass of anything unclean, or the carcasses of any creeping things. 
And if it be hidden from him, and what this is expression, if it be hidden of you, if you try to hide it, if you don't expose it, if you don't make those things known, Yisrael, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Just as Adam and Eve did not, they hide. They touched of that which Yahweh commanded them not to touch. Yet they hid themselves from Almighty Yah. We touch things that we should not touch, Yisrael. Whether it be with our hands, even with our, our mouths, Yisrael. We speak things, we speak judgment, just as those that spoke against Moshe. We touch those things that we should not even touch, Yisrael. He said he also shall be unclean and guilty. Yeah. Or if he touch the uncleanness of the son of Adam, unclean man, those things that are unclean from the flesh, Israel, yeah. whatsoever uncleanliness it be, that a man shall be defiled, defiled with all, yeah. it shall be hid from him, or again, if he tries to hide that, knowing that he has touched that thing, he has partaken of that thing, when he knows of it, then shall he be guilty. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil or to do that which is tough or right, whatsoever it be that a son of Adam shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him when he knows of it, then shall he be guilty of one of those things. Whether it is a vow of wickedness or whether it is that to keep that which is Sadiq, Yisrael Yah. If you keep it not and it is here, Yisrael Yah, then we are guilty. We are guilty of it. Verse 5. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty of one of these things, yes. that he shall confess that which he have sinned in that thing. Yes. That's all we have to do is confess, Yisrael Yah. Yes. That's where the deliverance comes from is in the yes. confession. That's where the shackles of the chains are broken loose. It's in the confession. And that is not to say, Yisrael, right, those that are listening by, by via of live stream, that you go tell every person or every man of what you have committed. That is not what this is saying. But yet, there are those that we should be and are able to have the utmost confidence in. And we should have the utmost confidence in Yahshua HaMashiach. We can bring anything before him if we will be honest and confess, Yisrael, Yah. Our iniquities and our faults. His ear is open. Hallelujah. In verse 16 it says, doesn't it say in uh, Yaakov or James chapter 5, I just want to look to this for a minute, Yisrael, Yah. That we should in James chapter 5 verse 16, Yaakov, confess your faults one unto another. And this is key also, even in Eo, and pray one for another that you may be delivered, that you may be healed, that you may be cleansed. It says that the effectual fervent prayer of a Sadiq man, it avails much. And it certainly does, Israel. We need the prayer of those that are effectual and one that is fervent. And it carries a very great weight, Israel. Hallelujah. Continuing, Yisrael. I will conclude this in Leviticus chapter 13 tonight. Hallelujah. And he shall bring his trespass offering. This is concerning the offering that we should bring, Yisrael. He shall bring his trespass offering unto Yahweh for his sin, which he has sinned. A female from the flock or a lamb or a kid of the goats for a sin offering. And the Kohen, he shall make an atonement for him concerning his sins. Now, does Almighty Yahweh still require an offering? Yeah. And we have heard this many a time, Yisrael. And we should remember Yahshua HaMashiach. He is an offering. There's no need of the bullock or the goat or the blood of any beast. Because the blood, the dam of Yahshua HaMashiach, it is more than sufficient, Yisrael. Yeah. It is more than able to cleanse and to wash, Yisrael. Yeah. But we must come, we must confess before the throne of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I need his mercies tonight. I need his Ahava, Yisrael. Above all, I need his Torah. I need his judgments. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, that he should bring forth his trespass, which he has committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto Almighty Yahweh. See, he makes it even more simpler. For the one that does not have that which is required. And the other for a burnt offering. And he shall bring them to the Kohen, and he shall offer that which is for a sin offering first, and ring off the head, or ring his head off from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. That is concerning the doves, Israel. One had to be slayed, or one had to die. But don't you see the act in which it said that it should not be separated? We know that Yahshua HaMashiach, he was not divided, Israel, upon that stake. He could not be parted. Even though they took his garments, Israel, it could not be parted. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's nothing about Yahshua HaMashiach that brings a divide or the division. That what is be, has been taught and been preached unto us, Israel, by the Torah, by the aspiration of the Ruach, that it cannot be understood. It is all Ekad, it is all one, Israel. So even as he wring the neck, it was not wrung off of the dub of the pigeon. And he shall sprinkle the dam of the offering on the one side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar as a sin offering. And he shall offer a second burnt offering according to the manner, and the Kohen shall make an atonement for him, for his sin, which he has sinned. And it shall be forgiven of him. Yahshua HaMashiach has already, he has made that atonement for us, Yisrael. He has shed his precious dawn. Only once, Yisrael. That is both for the condemnation and for the redemption of every man, of every Adam, Yisrael. But if he be not able to bring those turtle doves or the two young pigeons, and if he has sinned and and he, that sin shall bring forth an offer of a tenth part of an ephod, this very measure of fine flour for a sin offering before Almighty Yahweh. Do you see it step by step even make it simpler? That it, it will be easy for one to bring an offering before the Kohen, that he may be forgiven Israel. Yahshua HaMashiach, Almighty Yahweh, through Yahshua HaMashiach, have made this so simple for us, Israel, that we are without excuse. That he is righteous if he casts our nephesh into Seol or into the grave or into separation, unto hell, Yisrael, he is more than justified. Why? But he has, because he has given us specific instructions and he has made it very easy to do what he has commanded, Yisrael. Then shall he bring his offer unto the Kohen and he shall take a handful of it even a memorial thereof, and burn it unto the, al the altar according to the offering made by fire unto Yahweh. It is a sin offering. And the Kohen shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin. Yahshua HaMashiach has touched our sin, Yisrael. He bared upon every one of them upon that stake, upon that tree. His sin that he has touched every one of them. And it shall be forgiven of him. Did it say every one of them, Yisrael? Every one shall be forgiven. And the ramen shall be to the Kohen, even as a grain offering. So even through Yahshua HaMashiach, in the simplicity that Almighty Yahweh had made this offering, it should not be a hard thing for us, Yisrael, to enter into his tabernacle and to the presence of Almighty Yahweh with a shout of praise with todah, with dancing, with excitement, and with joy for what he has done for us and through us in Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Seventy times seven. Hallelujah. I told y'all for the, the mercies of Yahshua HaMashiach. Let us stand to our feet, Israel.
Hallelujah. 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 Let us shub, let us turn, Yisrael. Almighty Yah, what we do to you, we barak you for another evening, another day that you have given us life, you have given us health, and you have given us strength, Abba Yahweh. We do ask that you would touch Ko Yisrael Yah scattered around the Olam, around the world, Abba Yahweh. Those that did not make it even to the services tonight, we know that they're listening by via of live stream, and we told you, Abba Yahweh, even for that, that you provide what is needed, Abba Yahweh, that we may somewhat broadcast is this, this message, these words, to call Yisrael Yah. So we just ask tonight, Abba Yahweh, that you would touch all your condition, all your bam, your children, children scattered around the Olam, and that you would give us all tough rest tonight as we rest and the assurance of Yahshua HaMashiach, your word, your mishpah. And all things we do barak you in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Take those that have come with us to come tonight home safely to the appointed place at the appointed time. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we do pray. Hallelujah! 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 Yahbarak you, Yisrael.